have been part of that conversation in the last few months, and I'd like you to stand up if you've taken the Do the Math Challenge in the last three months. You, if you stand up more than once, that's okay. Let's stand up. And uh, I'm in a lucky spot because I get to be in touch by email and by phone and by person sometimes and go out to your communities and meet with you and have a chance to see the kind of growing wave of the campaign. And uh, I'd like to just read a little uh, an email to you because I think it highlights a lot about what the campaign's become. And, uh, and this, this story has three little parts. And the first part is uh, Renee Adams. Gay Renee, from the stop, somehow has a relationship with a woman in Wasega Beach named Amy McPherson. Facebook! Facebook. <laughs> have, have you ever met her in person? So this is interesting. Renee and Amy have not met in person. So in uh, early December, I get an email from Amy saying, we're doing the challenge in Wasega Beach, can I have it? I'm going like, who are you and how is this happening? And I thought, we had to organize this. This is spontaneously happening. So when Amy went ahead in Wasega Beach uh, and organized the challenge. We had a very successful challenge. <coughs> Um, and uh, she uh, went to London earlier this week to present to the Standing Committee on the budget. And I want to read to you uh, her uh, email to me about that and a couple of excerpts from her speech, if that's okay. And she couldn't come today, she was really sad she couldn't come down today, and uh, so she starts, and I told her I was going to share this. So she said, uh, I'm so happy you'll share these developments with the group, please tell them I'm there in solidarity, always. As part of my provincial work, I was invited as a delegate to the pre-budget committee in consultation in London this past Monday. The reception was exceptional as my speech was rather poignant. I covered OW, ODSP, OCD, and clawbacks, as well as equalizing payments between family types and establishment of the healthy food benefit. I hope you don't mind that I flogged putfoodinthebudget.ca and instructed all parties to view what their voters were saying about them. I didn't realize it at the time, but part of the panel included Chris Bentley, the Attorney General, and I can assure you I had his full attention. Uh, insofar as progress goes in the Wasega Beach area, the Deputy Mayor is fully on board with us, and I recently made a presentation to Council. The Mayor is staunchly against what we're doing, and it's an uphill battle, but I'm working on it and making progress by the day. The Deputy Mayor credited our food bank challenge with inspiring him to obtain the Vice Chair position for community services at the county level. I might add, the front page of the Collingwood paper was themed Top Newsmakers of the Year, and we shared the space with Helena Georges, MPP for our region. Wow. <laughs> Smack dab across the center, the print edition included our photos and also the deputy mayors. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, she wrote a wonderful speech, which we're going to post on the website, and you'll be able to see it later, but I just want to give you these excerpts. And uh, this is her introduction to me about her speech. To give you some context about my speech, I was there as a representative of many. We were forced to speak in the morning, and I had just sat to watch as nearly every member, every MPP, on the panel ignored the delegation about deaf and blind folks before us. Some MPPs were texting on their Blackberries, others in conversation with each other, but none were listening to the presentation. It was ugly. So I had lived the opening, and uh, it was most effective. It's the reason I had every single person in that room sitting up straight. So imagine you're in the panel, you're in the room right now, you're Amy, you're watching the MPPs do other things, Amy gets up and she says this. Uh, may I please have everyone's attention? I've noticed you're all very busy multitasking, either texting, flipping through papers, or having discussions. But I've driven five hours to be here, and my son and I won't eat this week to be able to provide you with this communication. <coughs> So if you could please put down what you're doing and share this exchange with me, I would greatly appreciate your participation. <laughs> you're going to clap several times, so you can decide whether you want to hold it or do it every time. My hands are Despite the string of feel-good headlines, my family is further behind than ever before. For every dollar you've given us under the Ontario Child Benefit, it's been taken away with the other hand by public assistance on virtually the same day. But instead of playing a, a new round of deductions, we were all hit with clawbacks across the board, and no longer does any form of welfare provide basic needs to a children. I appreciate the OCB, the Ontario Child Benefit, initiative to make funds available to all, but through this brilliant move of switcheroo, the working poor gained what the sick and frail lost. As a disabled person, I received $92 to help me feed my child, 
but $91 was rescinded for my son under the ODSP umbrella. We're painfully aware it's just the same pile being redistributed to twice the people now. Um, I had only received a $1 increase once all the rhetoric died down. This is what Sally Palmer's telling us. And if your accountant told you something different, he's fibbing, I promise. If I was your mother, you'd be grounded for hoarding food from the poor kids. It sounds funny on the surface, but I hope you let it resonate afterwards. The worst thing is I fear the government is out of touch with what it's really doing. The highest rate of homelessness is now single parents and whole families. The middle class is the new face of poverty, especially since the recession. Factories are still closing, and job creation only comes from Tim Hortons or 7-Eleven. This was a fine time to steal a safety net and name it a miracle for our benefit. Children who don't eat aren't healthy. Children who aren't healthy don't learn. Those who don't learn will not find jobs. And without a job, no one pays taxes. Worse yet, children who don't work or pay taxes can't grow up to teach their children any better. But it all started with the wee type whose milk and honey you stole. We got an email on our website before Christmas. This doesn't happen very often, but some, there's, on our website you can sign up to stay in touch, and there's a comments box. And we got an email from somebody in Wasega Beach whose hydro was being shut off January 2nd, and she wrote to us two days before Boxing Day. And Tracy and I saw the email and uh, wrote back to her. And uh, uh, we know some people at, in the United Way in uh, Barrie, and uh, we, know, we know by email Amy. And we connected her with Amy and we wrote to that. And it, we didn't really hear back from this person. And contacted and said, this, how did things work out for you? And she said, not very well, nobody's helping me. And that was the last I heard. And uh, it was, one of the things that was interesting was when she said, I never thought anybody would write back to me. Like, it, it, she was just sort of sending her plea into the universe and didn't expect anything. She was in desperate circumstances, but probably no more desperate than a lot of people, and maybe no more desperate than that of some people in this room. But she sent this plea out, and we did our best to respond to it. That was a month ago, and I asked Amy in the email exchange we just had, did you ever hear from that person? Yes, she made contact. It was a bit difficult for, at first, as she had lost hope in any support. She was turned away from just about everywhere and a bit angry, to say the least. But I managed to get her to come around and began helping her in a number of ways. To make matters worse, the father of her son died last week. She was forced to end life support as the only next of kin. I got the funeral covered by Ontario Works and PG&T, I guess that's an accounting firm, to look after the estate so she wouldn't be on the hook. I'll continue to assist her son in obtaining any CPP monies owed, and tomorrow I'm attending OW as a family to apply and advocate for every fund she requires. <clears throat> I had to twist a few arms, but I managed to get them food in the meantime. The issue of heat disconnection was just the tip of the iceberg. That too is remedied for the immediate anyway. I've begun setting up a support system and believe I've gained her trust to proceed. She's got a lot of big decisions to make, and I'm sure they won't be comfortable. We do have her back at least. And Amy concludes with this message to you. Cheers to all my brothers and sisters. Now there's lots maybe that we can you can take from that story and whatever you're hearing and all that story, and I just want to share two things.